And saying that, we'd like to pass the floor to Tim Stoner, Managing Director of uh, Space Syntax. Mr. Stoner, your professional career is related to studying behavior, communication of people in the urban environment. We know that uh, the lockdown undermined our behavior. How will the urban planning react to these new challenges? Will there be any consequences of COVID-19 remaining after this year and a half of the pandemic? Or probably the people will change their behavior patterns and probably would use certain spaces more actively and would refrain from other spaces, for instance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sergei, I, I wish I was in Moscow with you all, and hopefully next year we will see each other together in the same room. I'd like to address, thank you, your questions uh, by starting with the idea that cities are machines for human interaction, and we really need to value them for that reason post-COVID. And we have cities because we need to interact for social, for economic, and for cultural reasons. But not all cities work as machines, as efficient machines. There are good cities and there are bad cities. And in fact, most cities today are a mix of both. Good cities are highly efficient machines. They create social and economic interaction. And they do it with very low impacts on the natural environment. Good cities are walking and cycling cities with strong public transport networks, as we just heard. Bad cities do the opposite. They're dependent on cars. And so we need to be careful that when we talk about cities, we understand which type of city we're dealing with, the good or the bad city. And to do that, we need to be able to measure the difference between one and the other. And this is the mission of me and my colleagues at Space Syntax, building computer models to measure the performance of cities and then using those computer models to create plans for walkable, dense and connected cities. Because cities have suffered throughout their history. They've suffered from fire, from war, from diseases like cholera, and they've always been rebuilt to protect them against fire, to clean the water, as we heard, and to rebuild after devastation. COVID is different. COVID is not spread by water, but by human proximity. And this presents, I think, a big challenge for us, because if we avoid human proximity, we fundamentally undermine the essential function of cities. And without cities, we're not human. So if we're going to go back to being human, physical proximity, we need a vaccine. And even when we have vaccines, we have to remember we now have other options for human proximity. We have digital options because we've learned to live with Zoom, with Teams, with Skype. And indeed, arguably, we've developed some new methods of human interaction that we didn't have in cities before. And this raises, I think, a really important question. Can we learn to live without cities? But I think the simple answer is no, because for all of its benefits, digital connectivity does not replace physical proximity. And the key reason that digital is inferior, I think, is because of what happens in physical meetings. And that is the informal interaction between people, the things that were unplanned, the people you bump into when you go to a meeting, when you're in the street outside the meeting, the new ideas that emerge from those unexpected things that happen in the physical world. Digital tools just don't provide the same context. The call starts, the call finishes, there's no informal interaction. Serendipity is the magic dust of cities. 
And that's why I think we always will need them. But we can't always assume that when we get the vaccine and go back to our cities, that this serendipity will happen automatically. And I think this is because before COVID, many of our cities were substandard. The serendipity machine was not working well. These car, these car dependent cities were not making the best that cities can offer. And what is the best of cities? Well, we've heard already from Sergey, it's about walking, cycling, public transport, congestion free streets, clean air, shade, shelter from the wind, protection from seasonal and freak flooding, as we just heard from Michael in Singapore. Buildings that meet the ground, give something back to the ground plane. In other words, cafes, restaurants, shops, and galleries, not blank walls of cold stone or sheets of polished glass, as so many of my architect colleagues like to give. Instead, we need the serendipity machine. Unfortunately, that means a lot of refit of existing cities. Um, Think about the business trip that we used to make. If that's in a car to an air-conditioned bunker, back to a hotel in a car, back to an airport in a car, that's the serendipity machine broken. If instead the business day begins in a public space with a cup of coffee, it moves by walking to the next meeting and it's lived and played out in the public spaces of the city. If offices are open, not labyrinthine and cellular, If people genuinely have a buzz in the place they work, then the serendipity machine is working and we will not go back to to Zoom and to Teams. So the changes we need to make to our lives must not only be short-term ones about whether we have hand gel, but they need to be the long-term ones about do we have the right cities to attract talented people? Do our cities foster innovation? And after all, with increased automation, increased robotization. The jobs that matter are the jobs that machines can't yet do. They're the jobs that support the innovation industries, the design industries, and not just the design of buildings and space, but the design of finance, the design of governance. So in summary, interaction, innovation, and serendipity are for me the three words that we should look for. And how do we achieve interaction, innovation, and serendipity? It's through walking, cycling, and public transport. And this will help us remind ourselves that cities are there to help us be human. The coronavirus is a a great and deadly plague. If it has a silver lining, it's this. It's given us pause for thought to remember what we've truly missed about our cities and therefore what we should be building more of in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim, for such a very inspiring, inspirational pitch. And uh, same.